And joining me now for a closer look at what's playing itself out in that market scene is Wayne McCurry from FNP Wealth and Investments. Wayne, a pleasure. Uh, key, thank you so much for joining us. Sure. All right, Wayne, keen to just get your thoughts here. We are seeing markets uh, a little bit choppier, I think, than um, what might be anticipated and more red than green coming out of Europe. Uh, are we still uh, contending with issues of inflation? Well, look, I mean, it's been the same story now for so long. You know, rising inflation, interest rates going up, then interest rate pauses. And now the whole story is <clears throat> when are rates going to be cut? And, you know, is it going to be in three months' time? Are we going to get it in September? What's the inflation number going to do? What's the job number going to do? So we are in this, unfortunately, almost suspensive state in markets at the moment, <clears throat> where the only thing that's performing is U.S. tech. Certainly emerging markets aren't performing like our market. Although our market, you know, it's holding its own, but certainly we're all waiting for clear direction on interest rates and, of course, inflation stroke jobs numbers and other information will actually give us that clue as to what the direction is going to be. So we're sitting and we're waiting for data. It is MPC Day for South Africa. We're not expecting much to happen there or for no. that to have a material impact on markets. Not at all. Our, our Reserve Bank has got to wait for the Federal Reserve Bank, essentially. We cannot move before that. Even though our inflation is within the official target bands, we all know the true target band of the Reserve Bank is 4.5%, not 5.8%. So the Reserve Bank will say exactly the same story. Essentially, we're not going to cut interest rates until inflation shows a clear downward trend and especially worldwide inflation, and there's specifically the USA. So it's going to be very much the same as last meeting. Keen to get your thoughts on some company results now, starting off with Old Mutual. I see that share price up more than 3%. It looks like markets mm -hmm. are quite impressed with that. Also, new business uh, looking like it's still, uh, you know, ramping up for uh, Old Mutual. I'm keen to get your thoughts on this one. It is one of those legacy companies, isn't it? Yes. Look, I mean, the life insurance company has been the Meta Metropolitan, as you said earlier on, reported very, very good results. But the life companies, you know, they, they're essentially in an overtraded market here in South Africa. So everyone's gone overseas. They're all gone to India, gone into Africa, gone into various other jurisdictions to try and find some growth. But Old Mutual's results were good. They showed good volume growth, good uh, annualized premium income, it's actually a, a reasonably good set of numbers, and I'm not surprised that the share price is up. Must I just ask you about the bank build and your thoughts on that one? Uh, they're, I say, talking about 12 months, uh, Wayne. Uh, when we think of South Africa's banking sector, where would Old Mutual fit in? Look, it's, the banking sector is also overtraded. I mean, there's some very, very serious competitors. And essentially, what you bring to the party is your customer base and hope that you can sell you know, product to that customer base. Also keen uh, to look at uh, MetAir. Uh, they also seem uh, to have done a super, super well. In fact, they've uh, gone mm. from a loss into a quite a comfortable profit uh, win. Let's talk about uh, their period in review. Yes, nice turnaround. I mean, as you said, they're into batteries and all sorts of other OEM and, and aftermarket equipment for the motor car industry. They did have problems last year in their wiring loom business. They've done a lot of restructuring. And look, it's entirely dependent on motor car sales, essentially. And that's not going to do well until interest rates come down. But if you take a two to three year view, Mete doesn't look too bad at all, in fact. And then uh, let's uh, also uh, touch on what we uh, might be seeing uh, coming out of Sassfin. That's a difficult story. I think Sassfin's battled quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, when we're hearing of uh, banks really doing well, or uh, financial services companies doing well off, uh, you know, high interest rates, not quite the case here. Uh, but it looks no. like quite a few of their individual units battled. Look, Sassfin's quite interesting. For many years, they actually just plodded along, did very, did reasonably well. There were no problems there, but the last while they've hit serious problems and they're restructuring their whole business. I mean, they're selling off lots of business units. They've, they've sold it all to African Bank. Uh, they're trying to restructure their business to make it more predictable and more sustainable. 
but they had big write downs in their loan books. And we all know there's lots of other controversy as well around Sassman, which of course doesn't help at all. I mean, I'm keen also just to hear what you might be thinking about H&M that is in Europe. They've done super, super well there. Uh, clothing and apparel just seems to be one of those uh, that can be a very defensive way. Of course, if you time the trends uh, very accurately, the timing of the trends is important. Well, look, I mean, fashion companies, apparel companies, you know, every now and again, unfortunately, all of them make something, make an incorrect call on the trends and they show a bad year. But these are actually quite defensive companies and certainly H&M is one of the leaders there. So I, I, I quite like them as a theme, understanding that once every four or five years, their buyers will get it wrong and they'll sit in the overstock situation and have to do, you know, the heavily discounted sales to move the stock. Uh, but I actually quite like the, the sector, as you said, it is defensive. Brilliant. I'm keen to get your stock back in a bit, Wayne, but first I'd like us to reflect on counters that have found favour with your industry peers. Tesla, uh, the price has come down significantly, and I think uh, Tesla is one of the biggest systems that's been really badly over the last little while, uh, partly due to Elon Musk and other issues. But I think uh, they are set to, you know, they just released the full self-driving, uh, the largest version, that's apparently is very good. And I'm quite positive with the company going forward from here, especially the stuff around self-driving and even the other stuff around the AI as well. Very exciting at SunLab. Um, SunLab's had a great run-up to their results. Um, results came out very good. Price pulled back about 10%. I think they're back into a buying level. And it's and the reason I like it is the long-term narrative. First of all, their uh, partnership with Allianz in Africa is interesting. It's, it's at a very early start. But that is going to give them a new vector as far as their um, income stream is concerned. And then their continued association with and also possible expansion in India through their partnership with um, Sharyan. That's been going on for almost 18 years now. That's been a very profitable association and that is starting to gain traction and momentum and can become a very big part of Sanlam's earnings. So nothing to write home about as far as their local exposure is concerned, but um, four or five years from now, the local exposure might not matter that much seeing mm. the new markets that are developing into indeed it is a chinese share listed in hong kong may to one uh, you can view may to one as being the uber eats of china uh, they've got a very strong position in the food delivery business which is the way in which uh, most people in in chinese cities at least get their their meals on a daily basis but importantly they also diversified and they went into grocery delivery and they went into travel and tourism and these other ventures have been loss making significantly so and that has almost um, disguised the profitability of the food delivery business in the recent results of the the past week or so you've seen that those losses are starting to be curtailed so if the Food delivery businesses profitability will come through and we're near the point of break even for these other bets that mate one has made which has been very costly bets i think that can lead to very strong profit growth and after two and a half years of a bear market in china i think if you have that inflection where we are potentially reaching in mate one now with the turn in the sentiment towards china as well it could mean a, a, a nice opportunity from current levels all right, Wayne, keen to get your thoughts on some of those counters. We have Tesla, Sunlam, as well as Meituan. Meituan, I do agree with. I mean, they're the food delivery business is essentially what NASPAS process is trying to do, is you get the food delivery infrastructure, and then you can branch out and actually deliver other goods. You essentially become a logistics company. So I, I, I do understand that. Tesla, I'm a little bit cautious about. I think there's just too much competition coming in electric vehicles, Will battery electric be the answer? It seems to be losing out a little bit to hybrid electric at the moment. So I'm, I, I know what the share price has done, but I'm a little bit cautious on Tesla. On Sunlum, look, Sunlum's fine. It's a good company. It's, it's never really given us anything to worry about. You get a nice dividend yield out of the company. But you've got to have some faith into the expansion overseas as to whether that's going to be fruitful or not. You know, um, it's quite possible, but I think there's more exciting. I think there's better share picks than than Sunlum. Although there's nothing wrong with Sunlum, I, I just don't get I don't get terribly excited about it. And which counter do you love today, Wayne? 
Man, I'm going to go. I very seldom do this, but I'm going to go for my own company. And that's First Rand. <laughs> yeah. It's sitting, I know it went X dividend yesterday, but it's sitting at 60 Rand. That looks reasonably cheap to me for, for First National Bank. Uh, you're going to get a good dividend yield. There's no problem with the liquidity of the company. There's even a chance that the dividend might go up relative to the profits because of excess capital that they have in the in the in the shareholders funds so yeah i'll punt my own company uh, for a change <laughs> well Wayne, an absolute pleasure uh, talk, talking to you today thank you so much for your time that was your midday markets update with wayne mccurry from fnb wealth and investments